All right, great. I uh, hope everybody can hear me both here and online. Um, I'm Andy Gospodarik. I work for Broadcom. Uh, this presentation, uh, I'm sort of standing on the shoulders of giants here, Eric Davis and Eric Spada, listed alphabetically. Uh, they uh, are key towards designing this, uh, both from software and hardware perspective, software and hardware perspective. So I want to make sure they uh, they get their credit for for really a lot of this. Uh, so mistakes are mine, good ideas are theirs. Um, the other thing too is I know that there have been a lot of folks involved uh, outside of Broadcom looking at this. Uh, there's some community around this sort of building up. So if you're interested at all in that, uh, let me know. All right. Okay. Good. Looks like a rolling. Okay. So before we get going, I'll give uh, a short overview of Quick. I'm really trying hard not to say "quick overview of Quick" over and over and over again. Uh, it's more challenging than you think when you see it right there. So uh, the biggest thing to think about is that it's a transport protocol that runs over UDP. So if you've been coming to Linux Plumbers for a while, or if it's your first time, uh, if you've been here coming for a while, I think it was in Santa Rosa a long time ago, so many years ago, I can't remember. Uh, it was a presentation that was given by Google about like TCP fast open, and sort of all the optimizations they've been making over time. And this, I think, quick feels like a culmination of that from an outside perspective. Uh, and, and the idea is that HTTP3 uh, uses QUIC as a transport. And one of the key advantages to it is most of the stack uh, runs in an application instead of running in the kernel. So iteration was able to happen really fast. And I think that's, that's key to where, what got us to where we are today, but doesn't mean that has to be the future. Uh, so it utilizes TLS 1.3 for handshake and key exchange, as one might expect. Um, and really the key components to think about is that transmit and receive connection IDs are how connections are distinct, uh, how, how they are uh, recognized. So this allows a lot of movement between source and destination IP. You can have sessions transition from one spot to another. So you, we'll talk a little bit more about these connection IDs, but these are key to the entire thing. And another key component is that in general, encryption is contained within each packet. In fact, there's even a little more to it than that. But the point is that you're not doing like a um, sending down a big chunk of data, expecting it to be packetized by the kernel and having it uh, then expect to be received on the other end so it can all be uh, put together and re-encrypted again. So you might wonder like, why should I care about Quick? Um, that might be one of the things going through your mind, maybe not. So just yesterday for fun, uh, I did a quick Wireshark while we're sitting here. And um, apparently whatever uh, properties I was visiting online during that time, 76% of the traffic was actually using Quick. So whether you know it or not, it's really probably a pretty good chance most of your traffic is using Quick as it is, or a lot of it is. Um, only 15% in this case was TCP. Uh, notable 5% is ARP. So I guess there's a lot of ARP happening uh, on the Wi-Fi here while we're here. I, that one was kind of humorous to me. But yeah, so Quick is really heavily used right now, uh, whether you realize it or not. If you've got a handset and you're, again, accessing uh, many of the popular places online, you are using Quick already. Um, so, of course, as a hardware vendor, we like to think that you know hardware offload is good, software only bad, um, in the most simple terms. And I've been working in hardware offload for a really long time, and I would tell you that this is mostly true, but there are certainly cases where it's not. And I think that that one of the unique challenges with Quick, and one of the, the nice things that we could do if we support this as a community is that um, we don't need to necessarily offload every single thing to hardware. Um, there's a lot of things we can still do in software that are fast. Uh, ephemeral connections, short-term connections, small transfers, these are great for software only. Longer-term stuff that runs for an extended period of time, pushes a lot of data, I don't know, streaming video, maybe that's a good option for doing hardware offload of Quick. Um, Depending on who you ask, some, some uh, infrastructure will tell you they use as much as 15% of their CPU cycles just doing crypto. So you, know, you can do the math pretty easily on a multi-core system. 15% is a lot of cores that are spent doing something that uh, could probably be done by hardware. So that's kind of our stand. The thinking about selectively where we can use hardware is a good idea. And if we think about NICs today, a lot of them have tons of hardware offload capability, whether it's stateful or stateless. <laughs> Checksum offload, LRO. I can read these things off, but you all know about these. And some of them, as we move further down, like KTLS, there's a lot more stateful aspect to it. Uh, many of these have support in the kernel for doing things like this. 
Many of them actually don't, and they're sort of a direct user space configuration. We sort of bypass the kernel. It's tough to think about, but there is no, you know, GSO, or there is no, like, TSO, if we think back to the original days. The kernel doesn't construct a bunch of T TCP frames into one big giant frame to write down to hardware, right? We either get it from user space as a chunk, or we get it from user space in small pieces. So what would quick hardware offload look like in an ideal world? or maybe in my world. Um, so I think we would leverage our experience with KTLS offload and think about sort of the same APIs or similar APIs to support. The first way to think about it, I'm gonna kind of go through what we've done and what we've been thinking about and what we've tried and talk about this. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a bottom-up approach. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the kernel first and come back to user space at the end for those of you anxiously wondering what we're doing in user space. Uh, so the first proposal to think about is we would have a quick kernel module. Uh, we could also call this UDP crypto. We could call it whatever we wanted to, depending on how many different forms of UDP uh, transport encryption we might want to support. Um, the general idea is that we would have a northbound interface that speaks Netlink that we'd use for control plane and a driver interface, sort of southbound for lack of a better term, that would... Uh, translate those Netlink messages into, into a format that would allow drivers or hardware to offload. So if we have like a picture of that, essentially, because people love pictures, um, we have here in this one, you know, in the, this is the kernel and driver or hardware view of everything. We can think of this UDP socket layer. We have this quick mid layer that speaks directly um, the device drivers and assigns things. The two arrows, as you'll see as I show the user space later, the left represents what we would think of as control plane. So this would be Netlink messages that come down. Uh, the one on the right uh, should indicate uh, socket. So we're sending packets, the actual data plane. So the biggest thing that we wanna track with this kernel module is we wanna track, we'll track the flow in general. We'll track connection IDs, and we track direction, because just because you're offloading transmit doesn't mean you want to offload receive. Again, we want to leave this as, a, as something up to the application to do. Analogs to KTLS today, there is definitely a tracking of receive versus, a, a, or an offload of receive versus an offload of transmit. Um, additionally, we're going to, of course, track any of the session and crypto information for offload, because that does need to be passed down through uh, to hardware so it can perform the needed crypto. If we think about uh, what could work, I can, I can break this down and we can talk about these individual components, but we'd have what we call like a quick flow context. We could also have, again, this could be very generalized, but from quick standpoint, uh, there's a configurable connection ID length from zero to 20 bytes. We need to keep track of that. We need to keep track of connection IDs. We need to keep track of packet numbering. This is something that's also needed, uh, probably needed, generally needed for all hardware offload. Where we are in the key phase, um, which crypto algorithm we're using. And then we've got one that's really a software and kernel con construct I'll talk about a little bit more, which we'll think of XID or connection ID. Uh, additionally, depending on which cipher you might choose to use for quick, we're gonna end up keeping track of, of that as well. And this will be what's passed through when we go to the driver. So as I mentioned, we receive offload requests via Netlink. So this is a little bit different than what we receive today. So if we think about KTLS, these are all socket options. Uh, but I think Quick is much better suited uh, because you essentially want to be able to control removing and deleting flows, uh, not necessarily tying them specifically to a, uh, an individual like TCP socket. Uh, much better to have a way to do that out of band. Um, so for example, if we have it over Netlink, then of course there exists the example to say, well, why don't you show me what we have this offloaded via quick? So in this particular demonstration of, of a, like a patched IP route two, we've got an XID there at the beginning, our direction, receive, uh, source and destination IPs and port numbers, the connection ID, the cipher that's used and the device is connected. Um, I think it's really important and hopefully worth noting to everybody, we don't have a ton of the, other than connection ID, we're not explicitly saying, let's show all the crypto information here. Um, but I think this is, this is a good way that you can tell, you can understand what's being done on your system right now. Um, and again, if we're doing this over Netlink, ultimately long-term, 
which is one of the nice benefits. Um, could also add these via Netlink. I think that would be horrific um, because I think most of these flows are added pretty quickly in real time. So what you really want to do is, as I talk about with the user space in a few minutes, we'd have that a little bit higher up in the stack. All right, so the next thing we do is we think about, now we have this Netlink, Netlink messages come down. We have this database of information that's contained in our quick kernel module. And now we're going to add our offloaded connection information to drivers and ultimately down into hardware. So again, very similar APIs uh, to what we've seen before. This is just a, a quick dev add, a new uh, NDO that we'd propose, or I guess a TLS dev NDO. We propose uh, very similar in concept to what's with KTLS. We have the socket information, the quick flow context that I talked about earlier, as well as a direction. So anytime a flow is added, the proposal would be that uh, an application notes that they want to offload a quick flow, Netlink message is sent, driver handles it, kernel module, excuse me, handles it, um, sends down a quick dev add. If successful, we see this we we see this message come back up, and a connection ID would be returned uh, if the flow is capable of being offloaded. This connection ID is really key. It's the piece that ties everything together from user space all the way down to the driver. So we've talked a little bit about the kernel, we've gone through it pretty fast. Hopefully, uh, in in people's minds, it's fairly clear. Let's talk a little bit about what the user space challenges are in the next pieces. So most of the quick implementations today, uh, people have their own libraries. Um, I think one of the reasons that Quick was able to move and iterate so quickly and be successful is if you wanted to run Quick via Chrome, for example, a new update of Chrome could come out. You've got your new Quick iteration there. Uh, any other app that you have, might have, laptop, phone, anything else that uses Quick, new versions roll pretty fast. So. You have this quick application and a quick library that, that many people use within it. As mentioned, the control plane is Netlink. Data plane um, uses regular socket APIs. So how do we do this? Application, again, initial handshake, setup, done. We're not doing any of this in the kernel. We're not doing any of this in hardware. We'll let the negotiation happen. There are multiple different types of quick frames, one RTT, zero RTT. There are multiple different types of quick headers long headers and short headers. Uh, it's likely that what we want to do is offload only the, the, the very basic and, and most regularly used ones. If you look at a quick connection that runs on your system, it becomes pretty clear. Uh, but if an application says, I want to offload, I know this is not an ephemeral connection. I know this is long running. It's going to be bulk transfer. I'm going to send a request to offload this to Netlink. Again, as I sort of hinted at, the application will get an XID back as part of the, the, the uh, extended act cookie. Um, we can store this. We can know now if we have to send anything on the transmit data path, what happens? Oh, there we go. Okay, all right. It's the, so you put this XID in the C message header. Uh, if the data is to be encrypted by hardware, we'll know this. The kernel can handle this easily. Add an SKBuff extension at the socket layer. Um, I don't know why I keep looking. I have it here. Anyway, um, add an SKBuff extension to the socket layer. And, of course, the network driver can easily look at uh, this XID, this SKBuff extension header, format any TX buffer descriptors that it needs uh, to indicate that this is something that should be offloaded by hardware. Um, and the hardware will send this, in, this in, do the encryption and send the packet to the remote side, the peer. It sounds very simple in a lot of ways. There's clearly um, more to it that I'm sharing here in the slides, but it's, but it's not a difficult concept to really parse. Receive data path. I bet you can guess how this works. Uh, not too different. So the frames will automatically be decrypted by hardware uh, once you've done this Netlink call. And validation of the crypto, um, to make sure that, that everything is fine, will be reported in the buffer descriptor. Um, same kind of thing, Buffer populates an SK buff extension with both the decryption and authentication status uh, as it traverses through the stack. Um, the socket will set the C message header and pass that back to an application, indicating status and indicating whether or not the encryption was successful and whether or not anything needs to be done. 
So it's really kind of nice if we think about how this is how we've done a lot of crypto off or not a lot of hardware device offload in the past. Um, again, I want to emphasize how important it is to let applications choose what they want to do the crypto, choose whether or not they think something should be done in software or done in hardware. Uh, because surprisingly, typically the applications know best. We can spend a lot of time in the kernel guessing. Generally speaking, we're probably pretty wrong. Um, as I mentioned, it sounds really simple, um, but it's probably not. Um, or we need to think about what the next steps are. And I'm flying through this, but that's all right. Um, so I think like kind of our, the, the net takeaway that I've seen from doing this and working with Eric and Eric and others is that Quick is really well suited for device offload, especially when we're thinking about one RTT frames and, and keeping uh, short header packets involved. Um, I think the modifications that we can make to the kernel and to network drivers are pretty clear. Uh, again, we're, we're standing, you know, drafting behind a lot of what was done in the hard work zone with KTLS. Maybe the next slide comes. Too many slides. All right. Um, what we will see is that quick device offload will be part of like driver updates for the BNXT EN driver uh, in hopefully the not too distant future. Uh, so this will be there. We can show patches. We can demonstrate the whole stack. Um, we'll have it available uh, for people to see. The diff I think one of the challenges that when I think about this is what will the libraries look like? Will it take more time to increase adoption? Uh, I know from some discussions this, this week, there are um, support in OpenSSL for Quick today. Um, do we want to do a Netlink support for that in OpenSSL? Does that make sense? Will that make it more usable? Do the primary consumers of this hardware or this driver or quick offload at all, do they want to use OpenSSL? Um, additionally, I've heard numerous people talk about quick in other contexts rather than typically like HTTP. I know that there's apparently an effort underway to do uh, quick with SMB. Um, so what would that look like? How would those SMB clients be able to integrate with the same thing? I think this is, these are important questions to ask uh, but I think they're all, I think, relatively speaking, they're pretty solvable. Uh, and that's all I've got. I'm hoping that there'll be some questions. Maybe not. I see some folks right there. All right, bring it. Um, can you elaborate some more? Like, so you mentioned earlier for the setup, you would need to use Netlink. Um, wouldn't it be easier for the user experience to just have like a set sock opt or whatever on, on the socket itself and then pass this down? eventually to the NDO where you also pass the socket pointer because like I, I think like it would probably make the user experience nicer and also the adoption easier right as if everybody would have to build against the netlink library and so on so what like like what are your thoughts or like why did you choose this path to go to via netlink yeah I, I think decoupling it feels like a, a decouple like using netlink feels like it's decoupling the the data path and this and the the control, the, the control plane and the data plane a little bit. It's not really, because yes, it's the same set socket opt, but I think the hardest part is that there are, um, like, I feel like it feels like Netlink is easier to use in some ways than the set socket opt. It feels like it's a little more, there's a little more introspection available. I mean, I think I would personally like to be able to say, can I see what's happening easily? Maybe I like Netlink. Um, uh, I could go either way. I do think that the, uh, the in, hold on, let's say, are there questions rolling? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so I also, the, the, other, I, the other notion that we talked about uh, from some other folks as well is that, um, and I'm not reading the comments. Um, when you're, I think today there isn't a, I think there doesn't exist the ability to delete flows with KTLS. The presumption is that the flow, the NDO to delete the flow is called when the socket is closed because there's a one to run relationship between KTLS and the socket being open. So I think we need to have more fine grained control. Um, that would be, and that would be a good thing for more, a little bit more investigation. Yeah. So I work mostly in uh, across subsystems in the kernel and my first, the first thing I notice when someone creates a custom driver is 
why why is there a custom solution instead of integrating that within a certain framework within a certain kernel framework so is is like is is there is no existing framework in the kernel to accommodate this encryption offload without creating your own new user space interface um i'm a I'm not sure I quite understand your question. I'm sorry. Yeah. So my question is uh, the the use case of encryption offload uh, uh, hardware mm -hmm. is already existing in this is not the first protocol to do that, right? Correct. So my question is, is there already a framework that in the kernel that standardizes the user space interface for such a use case? Standard maybe be a tough yeah, like, is there a standard? I don't think so, really. I mean, right now, KTLS is the primary mm -hmm. offload, I feel like, exists when you percolate all the way down to hardware. I mean, there are other things that exist, as, you know, IPsec and other things that can be offloaded as well. But from a standard kernel interface, I feel like right now, KTLS is our example. Um, and it's, yeah, I don't know that I'm, I would call it like a custom driver per se. I mean, I feel like it's custom plumbing through the current, or it's plumbing through the kernel that, I mean, anybody could implement hardware that does quick offload. So I don't see this as something that hopefully we're the only people that would ever use. I would think this would be something that in the future more, I mean, multiple different devices today support KTLS offload. So the same could be true for quick. But there had to, you know, someone had to do it the first time. And then everyone was able to sort of draft behind it. I hope that answers your yeah, question. Yeah. Okay. And uh, hey. how do you deal with the different uh, ciphers that is used in uh, Quick? As far as I remember, the header is encrypted one way, and the data, the payload, can be encrypted in, in a different way. So how do you deal with the installation of these uh, ciphers, and how do you deal it with the uh, with the data in hardware? Um, so I don't actually, I didn't think headers and data were encrypted differently. I'm not a quick expert, but oh, yeah. the, he the header is, huh? Oh yeah, they, they are. They are okay. Um, so I, can't, I, won't, I won't be able to specifically speak to the implementation, uh, unfortunately. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, I was just kind of curious. I know Quick is like another protocol level feature, which wasn't really mentioned, which was like the stream multiplexing. And I was wondering if that like complicated ever anything um, in the implementation, because uh, it seems like you have to do some fine surgery in like the Quick libraries to kind of just do the um, security, but not the multiplexing layer. Yeah, so I think that's one of the, and I think those is the multiplexing is in a, like a later draft. Is that correct? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think general agreement in the room, it's in a, a later draft. Um, this really predominantly looks at like the first IET, looks at offloading one RTT stuff from the original um, draft. So there's lots of things that are happening, right? Like people are encoding packet sizes or length sizes and connection IDs. Those, all of that may or may not necessarily be supported in the first uh, sort of implementation. So there's, there's, lot, there's lots going on, I mean, even including Right, there's a um, like a load balancing spec uh, or a load balancing draft that's, that's being proposed for Quick as well. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could speak at all to uh, sort of per connection work that you would need to do for this. Uh, so what I'm thinking is, um, so let's say per connection you're offloading. If you have one connection, you're like pushing lots of data. Totally makes sense. Yep. Um, but how closely do you think that matches current usage of Quick? Uh, in terms of like, will people be setting up new connections all the time? And then every time you set up a new connection, you have various syscalls and net link, you know, configuration to be right. able to offload that, right? And that's, that is, um, that's a great question. Um, I mean, like I haven't deployed quick, um, so I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, I think, I think it's key to think that connections will be set up and torn down quickly and some of them will be short and long. And I think that's part of the reason that we, you know, came to this is that we do want to give the application provider. The, the choice to do it. You know, it's it's not a guarantee that just because you use, you know, a quarter or whatever of your of your CPU, or maybe not a quarter, but a lot of your CPUs on on crypto doesn't mean you're going to be able to save all of that. We want to give people the opportunity to save as much as they can for longer flows, 
you know, directional that they, whatever direction they choose, et cetera. So that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, maybe to speak to that a little more, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not, a, not a quick user, uh, but I, I know that um, uh, in Cloud Native, it's common to have a proxy, which will have like a whole bunch of connections that they're pooling, they're reusing those connections. So maybe on the server side, being able to offload something like this makes sense. I'm not entirely sure of the semantics of the connection ID there, but it seems like maybe on the client side, like in your Chrome browser or something like that, it would be. Yeah, sure that, that's how, predominantly how where I see this. Yeah. I don't see this as, you know, we're not going to have quick offload on our handsets. Yeah. But, or, or even laptops. But I think where it's most valuable, right, is, actually, is absolutely where that connection is terminating. Um, and then, you know, any, any intra, intra data center traffic is probably also hugely able to benefit from this. The IP crypto output you showed showed an IP address. Do you support quick mobility or is some of the stuff based on like flow tuples? So it should be, so we should be able to, we'll probably need to rewrite, um, without going into too much detail, we probably need to rewrite that, um, remap the connection ID to a specific IP address as, as like a source IP changes, for example. Um, but there's, there's no reason, right? I mean, quick supports just the ability to say the connection ID is all that matters, you know, whether yeah. I'm on my, you know, 5G or whether I'm on Wi-Fi, as it switches, the connection should stay up and should be operational. Um, so that being able to detect that um, will probably have a miss, a miss or two okay. in hardware and, we'll, and you'll, your application will need to say, hey, rewrite that, rewrite that source IP quick, quickly. Sorry, see, there it is. Um, you can't say it without, uh, rewrite that. And, and so I don't, the hardware I don't think we'll be able to support Okay. specifically like, and, and I can't imagine, um, it's not, I can't imagine, um, it, it remains to be seen. That really is how to do it. Hi, thank you for the great talk. Um, I was wondering, uh, have you considered how, um, isolation will work in multi-tenant environments? For example, when you have multiple containers that want to use uh, hardware offloading? Um, so I don't, have we considered it? Like, no, it's not been a number one thing that we've thought about. However, I, I don't know specifically what would prevent that from being possible. Um, I mean, at some point there's, you know, could there be scale issues depending on the number of flows or the number of connections, yes, do, do using containers make that greater? Could be. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't right now foresee a reason why it couldn't um, be an option. Just in terms of performance isolation, for example, if you have one container impacting the performance of another application. I'm sorry, can you, can you speak um, to the mic a little yeah, more? Yeah, in terms of performance isolation or, um, you know, um, essentially when you have one container impacting the uh, connections of another one, Ah, um, that's it. That's probably a, that's a good question. It's, it's good to think about. Like I, I have to think about that some more. I don't Thank have you. a great answer. Sorry. I think we're out of time. Um, there's one more question from from John on the on the chat. He asked if there's. Oh no, one. John's not allowed to ask any questions. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. Slide 13 is a quick ULP block. We're also working on using. K Sorry, I'm going to read that more slowly. John no, no, says, no. "Yeah, the slide 13 is a quick ULP block. We've been working on using KTLS lately, and the SASACOP interface is working nicely for us." No, no. He uh, does. Three, but he have. Uh, is there any code to review? Basically, is there any code posted? Not yet. I mean, there was a. Uh, is it going to be similar to the RFCs that were posted out of Meta? So, at yeah, point? very similar. Yeah, okay. Very similar. So yeah, Meta has been involved in in looking at quick offload as well. There was a patch series that was done uh, last year, I think, yeah. maybe like and a year I, ago. I think that was posted, but that, yeah. that didn't include any offload. So yeah, not yet. Do you do, can you comment on uh, there? You mentioned that there is some work done on uh, encoding the length of the connection ID. Is that as the next next version of Quick, or is that just some like best you know some guidance or like what's your... it's what it's what people are doing like in order to save another couple bits in terms of of communicating uh, packet length that will encode the length like several vendors on their own version of Quick will will do this so it's but it, it is being discussed at IDF right with all the I think so yeah yeah 
there's there's been discussions about yeah next version like it's hard to know like is it the next version or is it just a like an iteration um, that 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 part like I've been I can feel the breeze as that discussion happens uh, and that's and that's about the extent of it. Um, All right, thank you, John. We see your request so uh, for for showing the code. We'll, we'll be there.